Yeah. All right, people, what's up? Back again. All right. You guys have been doing pretty good. Hanging in there with me. For some reason, uh, we got selected to unwind from all the bad theories. And, um, you know, hey, that's what we got to do. We're going to unwind. Today, we're going to unwind from Pangea. Sounds a little bit too much like diarrhea. Or even worse, gonorrhea. Well, hopefully we can make it gone. Um, you know, it's all wrong. You know, they, there's, there's no gravity assist. There's no, no moon. You can watch, like, some of the best documentaries on YouTube, television, go to the movie theater, whatever. They talk about this theory and there's absolutely don't mention the G word once. You gotta have the G word. It's gotta be in there. Gravity. Hello. And gravity has a self-balancing mechanism. All right, let's roll into this one. Hopefully we can make some sense. I don't know. I don't, I don't uh, have a teleprompter. I don't have a production agency or a producer or uh, screenwriters. Whatever, whatever's coming, it's coming straight off the hip at you. So just calm down. Might get a couple of ahs. Every once in a while, you'll see me slap the back of my head and try to get another word out, but um, we should be able to get through this. All right, here's the guy that started all this uh, stuff. His name is Alfred Weniger from Germany, 1880 to 1930. Holy cow, man, only 50 years. That's not a lot. Anyways, um, well, it's enough to start a theory, anyway. So it didn't come into his uh, into his lifetime. They uh, got some uh, information on um, uh, what do you call it, the mid ocean ridges in the '60s, and they went running for this Pangea theory. And uh, yeah, it's been uh, the uh, end all be all. They just can't get enough of it. So let's get a look at Pangea. It's the way it is, I'll be fading in and out, and. Um, you know, it's a Triassic uh, period 200 million years ago. All right, everything was back. They, 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 they uh, want you to believe that all the continents were on one side of the planet, just staying there nice and happy. And then, um, you know, present day, we just bounce back out and everything moves. And then there's a, um, a succession of uh, Pangea, and uh, you know, 135 million years later, they start to separate. 65 million years ago, they're kind of like in their own little, you know, own little, um, you know, uh, sections of uh, continents. And then present day, right down here, absolutely flipping ridiculous. I mean, honestly, if you had all the weight of the continents on one side of the planet, was spinning at somewhere around 1,100 miles um, an hour. Uh, you know, it, it would just rip itself apart. Again, it's not their fault. They don't realize that gravity has a self-balancing mechanism in it, and that's why everything in the universe is spherical. It's round. All uh, right, here's the uh, here's the joke of the day. Here's a um, a nice rendition of uh, you know Pangea coming apart and going back. It's a nice little gif. And uh, again, it's just absolutely ridiculous. So hopefully, this, I don't know. Hopefully, you've seen these videos. Can you see this IRA? It looks like I can see it. So, anyways, this is when you toke up the big fatty. You know, I mean, it's just ridiculous. Uh, all these things, and all of a sudden, they magically have these, uh, you know, mid-ocean ridges or seams in between the continents and some magic energy, heat and pressure somehow blows them apart and we end up with today's uh, continental, um, uh, what do you call it, footprint. And here's another one that they love to uh, stuff down your throat to tell you that uh, this is real because there's another one, you're going to have to spark up a bigger one for this one. The uh, they, they say that there's... Um, the evidence that proves that the continents were together is uh, put forth that there was the same species of animals or life forms. I'm like, 
really the common house flyers on all four corners of the planet, you know? I mean, it, it's just like absolutely stupid. And, and you know the life forms happen to be on the same latitude. Uh, you know they could have they could have started out at the mid ocean ridge, and by the time they got pushed, uh, you know going east and going west, it's the same life form. One one guy ended up on the uh, west side of the ridge, the other guy ended up on the right side of the ridge. Again, it's just I mean they get out there, they get the professor, he's on the island, he's showing you a little fossil, just marvelous, you know. Just they just can't get enough of it. All right, here's the uh, big player. Is uh, the download here the moon? We're getting away from Pangaea. Uh, I'm sure everybody knows about Pangaea. They've been poisoning our minds with the nonsense for decades now—30 years, 40, 50, getting into who knows, 50 some odd years. Um, there you go. We got the moon. This is the big player here. Been with the Earth. What do you want to call it? Parked in there. Became uh, you know uh, part of the Earth. That's the big the the big uh, whack theory where. It, it just blew off and created it, and uh, after an asteroid hit it. Um, There's another great uh, shot here. We have the uh, moon right over lovely Earth. Pulling and tugging, tugging and pulling. Now, the moon gives you um, gravity. You know, it's live gravity. You have static gravity. Like, the planet Earth is out in the middle of nowhere, uh, completely removed from any gravitational fields. Uh, you know, from moons uh, and planets and stars and all that stuff. That's static gravity. But, but, you know, if the Earth is here and the moon's, you know, rotating around it, um, you know, 28, 28 days to make, uh, you know, one revol... Oh, no, it's not 28, yeah, 28 days to do a revolution around the Earth. Um, well, we rotate underneath the Earth, uh, every underneath the moon. Whoa, got to slow down. We rotate under the moon every 24 hours, and you know the moon does a the rotation every 28 days, or 27.223 is your uh, skull and bone code, you know, in case anybody's trying to figure out what 223 is. But anyways, that's a 223.223 days, 27.223 days. Um, another, another, you know, group of beautiful people, God's beautiful children, Scaring the hell out of everybody with the moon. With the moon is the, uh, the the giver of life, not the uh, you know the uh, demonized um, you know, monster that the uh, powers that be try to make it out to be. Anyways, live gravity. All right, here we are. In the beginning, the planet was water. Genesis. Read a couple. I think it's Genesis one through six or something. And um, water. Okay. And then um, that's it. We're just spinning out there. We get the moon. We have the uh, we have the sun. I'm not going to get into uh, you know uh, citing uh, biblical uh, biblical stuff from Genesis or, or whatever. But all right, the ice age. The first ice age comes along. Bam! Holy crow! Holy crow! Holy cow! Well, one giant snowball. What's going on? Help! It's cold down here. All right, we're just one spherical snowball. Well, the uh, ice did not melt, uh, grow evenly. It ended up, you know, big giant lumps. And kind of looked like this right here. Now you can see over here on the, on the left is a uh, big lump. That could be like North America. And um, so it's a giant three, four, five, six mile high lump of ice. Okay, big giant glacier sitting on the north northern continent of uh, what's now North America. No land now. Okay. So what happens is with the moon and the uh, the Earth spinning, you have a gravitational field. Um, you have a live gravity going on, and what it does is when you put a lump on one side of the planet. It lowers the gravitational field field on the other side of the planet on the same latitude. 180 degrees opposed to that mass, you're going to lower the gravitational field, and a and you're going to grow a mountain, magma. It's going to lower the gravitational field and allow magma to rise in large areas of uh, this this area over here. It's going to match this area on the left that, that's made out of ice. So the first mountain. I know, I, I think Africa is like the oldest um, crustacean on the planet, but just for argument's sake, we're going to say this is North America, okay, Ice Mountain, 
and then that created what's now known as the Himalaya mountain range. Don't, don't, don't pull back on me now. Just stick, stick with me. We're not talking about Bigfoot here. This is real science. Okay. This is fact. This is evidentiary visible facts that you can see every day. Okay. The moon has a high tide and a moonless side of the planet has a high tide. So it, that's, that's the evidence. You know, if you have, you have uh, a high tide on one side to lower the gravitational field, on the other side of the planet, you have a high tide over there. That's, that's the foundation of this discovery. That's the foundation of what we're talking about. All right, so uh, along comes the, uh, the big thaw. We're out of the ice age. And what happens is uh, the Himalaya mountains came into existence during the Ice Age. And when the uh, big ice uh, mountain thawed over North America, that lowered the gravitational field, and bam, you have the North America continent coming into existence with the moon stroking the, ma the, uh, the magma currents, lowering the magma, magma uh, you know, gravitational fields in the magma chambers and allowed it to, to rise. Okay, here's the uh, mid-ocean ridges, and um, basically, uh, they didn't know about the mid-ocean ridges when they came up with Pangaea. The reason the continents look like they're attached is because of the shape of the mid-ocean ridge, okay? So it's not, um, you know, the continents were stuck together. The continents were built the way I just described it. Okay, one, one giant ice mass creates a, you know, a, a land mass, and then when you thaw it out, you get, you know, the other, the other um, land mass gets created because gravity inherently has a built-in balancing mechanism in it. It's throughout the universe. All right, here you go. There's another picture of the mid-ocean ridge. And uh, yeah, it's just a, it's just huge. I mean, this thing goes from uh, Antarctica all the way to the uh, Antarctica. Um, the North Atlantic one is the biggest one on the planet, the largest, the longest one, anyways. And it it breaks it breaks east and west. And here's a rotating, uh, beautiful planet there. It's a, it's a horrible picture there. I'm, I'm just gonna skip that one. All right, now. The, uh, the tectonic plates, well, they were al already with us, and, um, you know, they were with us during water world before the, uh, before the large continents came to, in, into existence. So, you know, there was some kind of plate, tectonic plates there. Don't know what they were, but this is what the tectonic plates look like right now. All right, these are mid-ocean, these are the mid-ocean ridges. This ain't tectonic plates, excuse me. These are the mid-ocean ridges. These are the ridges that are for the most part, they go north and south, but you do have some that go slightly east and west, and a couple go east and west. Those are real noisy ones, as you'll find out in a few minutes. Uh, this is your mid-ocean ridge. You've got uh, magma currents that uh, feed a new, new magma, and the plates, basically the ocean plates going east and west. They, they flow one to two inches um, you know, east and one to two inches west every year. And then they go underneath the continents, which are pinned, fixed in place because of the gravitational um, connection between the two land masses. So every land mass out there has an opposite land mass 180 degrees away from it on the same approximate latitude. So North America lines up with, uh, you know, uh, you know, the Himalayas, uh, the Himalaya mountains line up with uh, North America's Sierra Nevadas, uh, Rocky Mountains, and uh, Appalachians. And then you have uh, Australia lines up with South America. Um, they, you know, everything's, everything's got a, a, a balancing land mass to it, except for Africa. Africa does have a balancing land mass, but most of it's underwater during the interglacial period. And that continent has been super engineered not to really create a massive continent on the opposite side of it by the planet builders. We'll get into uh, that a little later. All right, trucking right along here. We have, um, you know, more more pictures of the uh, mid-ocean ridges. You know, just the outer currents, the uh, pressure and magma. That's what pushes the stuff up. It's on the uh, mid-ocean ridges. And then you have some more of the Eurasian continent, uh, Indian subcontinent, lithosphere, 
That's Dino's gear. Uh, basically, the, the, the uh, ocean plates go underneath the continents because the continents are huge. They're, they're giants. They're, they're, you know, they're hundreds of miles, uh, no, no, hundreds of miles, miles above the uh, surface of the ocean at the, at, the, uh, at, the, at the top of the mountains. And then, you know, obviously they're, you know, above, above sea level. Uh, from one end of the uh, continent to the other, so there's just a lot of mass. So the um, the ocean plates are not going to uh, budge these uh, continents. They're not going to move the continent. The continents are pinned. They're not drifting. They're not moving. They might, if anything's going on, in, in which the only thing that's going on is they're rising up. And we'll get into that in a few seconds. Why are they rising? Um, that's another one. We're drifting out of Pangea. We just threw, we just uh, did the uh, the big, um, you know, field goal to Temple Pangea, right, right through the uprights. That's gone. See you later. Shaughnessy's theory of uh, how continents came to be and um, how they're pinned in place with the gravitational, um, you know, a connection of gravity. And here we are. Here are the tectonic plates, plate tectonics. The, as you can see, there's a bunch of them. And uh, the Indian plate, we're going to discuss the Indian plate because that's, you know, it's a well-known one. That's the, uh, you know, where India is pushing up into the uh, Himalayas, causing that mountain actually to rise today. There's mountains that are rising um, all over the earth, but this one's actually, you know, such a massive uh, amount of, um, you know, trillions of tons of mass. The uh, mainstream geologists, theoretical geologists, uh, theoretical f uh, physics people, uh, you know, they just they just they just write it off as like pressure building up. It, you know, it's absolute rubbish. So um, it's not pressure. It's not heat. There's something else going on. I'm on back. All right. Um, this is the uh, Asian summer monsoon. There's a lot of erosion with the rain and everything, but um, you know, we'll get through that. There's the the uh, Earth is pumpkin shaped during the Ice Age, right? Because the massive ice on the poles turns it into a pumpkin, and um, that's what I wanted to show you right here. We got a little show and tell going on. I don't know if we can see this, but this is these are the plates right here. These are the plates in an Ice Age. They're separated, and then when you let go, they they cling together. So what happens in an Ice Age? is the, uh, the plates just flow out real easy. They get bigger around the equatorial region because it's a pumpkin. And then when the, uh, the interglacial period comes, the poles thaw out and the circumference of the Earth at the equatorial region actually shrinks. Well, that puts pressure on those plates. And um, consequently, you know, we go, we go into a round planet and um, those plates go up underneath the, the uh, continent and they push the continents higher. This is what's going on in India. And it's not, it's not pressure, mid-ocean ridge, uh, thermal dynamics that are moving this, that's moving this continent. It is that constant flexing during the ice age and during the interglacial periods that pushes India up into the Himalaya mountains. That's, uh, we call that the Shauna Force, after the guy discovered this force, this, this uh, method of uh, plate shifting. Uh, it's named after this guy named John Shaughnessy. I'll get to him later. And uh, basically that's, that's what's causing this. Now, you know, we get into some uh, technology later on, and that's what they do with pyramids. They build pyramids to punch holes through tectonic plates. Um, you know, our society is just sitting there, sitting there watching this giant mountain just go up uh, every, you know, every uh, interglacial period and uh, just getting bigger and bigger and bigger. What our previous uh, intelligent society, humans, humans, it was all humans did, was they went ahead and, um, yeah, they just, they just made pyramids and punched holes through tectonic plates to slow that down to, uh, you know, break it off so it wouldn't, so it wouldn't shove India up underneath the Himalayas. And, uh, you know, that's, that's about it. So um, I hope that made sense. I'm hoping it made sense. There is something about the moon. That's my uh, book I just wrote. And it's uh, got a lot of information, kind of, kind of touches on, uh, you know, what drives the ice age, the interglacial periods, and everything else. And then you got Pyramid Gravity Force, my uh, original book, the first book that I put out. Uh, those are two websites.